I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! And we'd love it if the Holy Trinity was together, but we're trying to get the whole scheduling together for everything. So, everybody, welcome back to Big Apple Hockey Bar Talk, where we gauge our confidence on NHL topics based on our choice of drink. Are you so confident you're buying everybody around? Are you so depressed you just need a shot or just, you know, so-so for a beer? So, we're going to start with this. The New York Rangers are better off not winning the Metro division. Anthony? Um, beer. Uh, and I say that because, again, I, I think they could beat Washington or Pittsburgh. If, if they finish first, um, they're going to play Washington as they're the, the second wild card. Um, and then if they finish – if they finish second in the division, they play Pittsburgh, who I think they could beat as well. So, um, you know, it would be different. For instance, if they, you know, if they won the division and because of that they played, you know, Toronto or, or something like that, then I would say, yeah, you know, maybe not. But in this case, or they're going to be locked into a matchup with Pittsburgh or Washington. Um, so, and again, I think they could beat both those teams. So I'll, I'll say beer. I'm going to go shot. And the reason why is kind of simple. It's right over your face. Sorry about that, but it was designed for the three of us. But uh, I'm going to go with shot. The reason why is because you never want to run from success. If you're going to do that, you're going to be, you're going to be just, mm -hmm. it's not like say for instance, the Islanders last year that they didn't matter whether or not they were first or fourth. It, 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 it just didn't matter this time. You can actually change things around and I don't want to hear about it. Let's say for instance, the Rangers finish in second place. And then it comes down to a best of seven series. Let's say it's a conference finals against Florida Panthers. And then Ranger fans go, oh, well, or let's say it's against uh, the conference finals against the Toronto Maple Leafs, who they're tied in points with. By the way, it takes an extra amount of imagination that the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to win around. But it's just um, the, mm -hmm. then it comes down to, oh, well, game seven could have been on our ice. Yes. Well, you wanted the tank and not finish first place. So yeah. could they be better off? Yes. But don't the, the players aren't going to do that. The players want to win the yeah. division. Yeah, absolutely. And so do the coaches. So does everybody. Fans are the ones we start we start doing all this. And by the way, there's going to be an article later on this week from me about the possible playoff opponents and playoff matchups. But no, you don't want to run away from success. Going right back into your wheelhouse, Anthony. And oh wait, by the way, the race to win the Metro was right there. Sometimes I get too involved in talking. I forgot <laughs> to put up my Chirons. Um, the New York Islanders are going to go big game hunting in the off season. Mark, you hear, you hear that beeping sound? Yeah. It's, it's the sound of a Brinks truck backing up to someone's front door. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, it's around. Uh, I, I think, I think Lou is going to go hard after Johnny Gaudreau or Philip Forsberg. Um, if they reach free agency, um, they have $11.2 million of cap space heading into the off season. Um, with only no adoption to sign. Um, and I think there's even more cap space at hand for them when, once they move Varlamov and or Bailey that can give them even more. So um, they need a score. So there's no doubt in my mind that Lou is going to target Goudreau or Forsberg, uh, different players. You know, Forsberg's probably the better pure goal scorer, even though Goudreau only has like four less goals. But um, Goudreau is the better all-around player. You know, he, he eclipsed 100 points last night. Um, so either way you, you can't go wrong, but I think Lou is going to throw a lot of money at the two of them, um, if they reach free agency. So I, I absolutely, I think he's going to go big game hunting. I look at the list that I compiled right there. I threw Patrice Bergeron on there just for the sake of throwing him on there. I doubt Boston's going to jettison him or let him go. And I doubt he's going to want to leave, but you know, you never know something's happened and that's where it's, he's just there. Phil Forsberg, I think, is going to re-sign uh, with Nashville. But you know what? You never know. It's something else can happen. Johnny Gaudreau is the guy that I'm targeting because we know he wants he wants to come back in this area. But it's it's it's. Let me ask you right now: Philadelphia, or the Islanders. Which one are you going to? I mean, the Islanders are much closer team to to winning a brand new building and all that stuff. So you know, I would say the Islanders, but you never know. Forsberg's from South Jersey. He grew, uh, sorry, Goudreau's from South Jersey. He grew up a Flyers fan. Um, so, you know, who 
So who really knows? But um, Forsberg fits the bill just because he's more of a pure scorer, like I said. But, you know, you wouldn't say no to Gaudreau either. I mean, that. And you know what? I looked at the other names on that list, Anthony. There's a lot of no uh, game guys I wouldn't say no to. Yeah. Nazem Kadri right now with the season that he's having, he, Nazem Kadri would be a great New York Islander. The problem is good Kadri's a, a center. I mean, the Islanders don't really need a center right now. But then you can so, you could start talking about moving a guy to a wing if you want you to. Could, yeah. You, you could. could. John yeah. Klingberg is another one. Brian yeah. Rust would be a great addition. Like those are those are some real yeah. good names out there. I just I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with beer only because I think he's going big game hunting anyway. And you could probably taste that beer right now if you want to. <laughs> but um, I, the only reason why I'm going against that is it just Lou's philosophy seems to be spreading the wealth, not focusing on one player. He might try to go trade for Vladimir Tarasenko. <laughs> that's, Still, yeah, that, and, that's yes, that's another option. And, and, and get him for cheaper. And then, then what it would pay? How much well, are you paying Johnny Gaudreau right now? He's going to, I think he's going to ask for at least $10 million a year, probably. Forsberg, Forsberg, probably eight to nine. I don't think he'll get 10, but I mean, either or you're talking, you know, big money, big money for either for def, definitely. Um, Tarasenko though, I don't think he's going to come cheap. The last summer was the time to get him cheap because there was unknowns about his shoulder. But now that he's proved that his shoulder is, is totally healed, he's going to command a decent amount in return if you try to trade for him right now. So. All right, and then the, and well, the other wrinkle, the other wrinkle to this is too, is I think one of the reasons the Coyotes didn't trade Chikrin is because they only had a few amount of teams buyers at the deadline who were interested. Now by waiting, now they opened them up to the whole league, where you're going to have pretty much everybody interested in him, more suitors. And I think the Islanders, Lou referenced hockey trades in his post deadline press conference. That's the way to get better. Something tells me that he's used, he's going to use Beauvillier plus other combinations and try to get Jacob Tricker, and that's the definition of a hockey trade. Good young player for a good young player. Salaries are very similar. Islanders need help on the left side defense. Uh, I would watch out for that too. You know, the Oscars was two weeks ago, and it's been award season. Uh, we were trying to get on last week to say <laughs> what, what players you would want to slap in the face. But anyway uh, – NHL award season is two months away, but the quick question is, is Austin Matthews the winner of the Hart Trophy right now in your mind? I mean, so much is being made of him and his, you know, the way he's scoring goals. Um, so it's really hard to argue it, but I'm still, I'm still a big proponent of Jonathan Huberto for, for the heart. I mean, he's, he's got what, um, a hundred and what, 304 points now on the year. Um, and I know he plays with Barkov and that's the argument people make against McDavid dry but Huberto has been on another level this year. And I think, I, I just think he, for my money is the heart winner, but I, I totally see why Matthews very well might win it. So I'll, I'll go, I'll go beer, but, um, I don't know. I just like Jonathan Huberto a lot in the year he's had. I, I'm buying around. Uh, I think he's been the most important player to the Maple Leafs, and he's what's keeping them in. And he just keeps on. The guy's going to score 60 goals. He's got another yeah. month left. He might get the 65, maybe even 70. I mean, I don't even – depends. Does he have any more games against Detroit? More on them in a, in a minute? But it's it's just uh, there. There's just so he's been doing so much for this team, and I and I yeah. know the hockey writers always favor anything Canadian related, even though he's a U.S. player. But he's playing in the, Tor in the Toronto Maple Leafs, even though everybody hates the Toronto Maple Leafs. That's a different story. But um, unless you're a Leafs fan, I actually don't hate the Maple Leafs. I make lots of jokes about them, but I I don't yeah I don't hate them. But uh, no, it's I, I think he's the Hart Trophy winner. Um, I think he's. I think he's he's great, and that's just what's going to happen. And look at these numbers, Anthony: fifty-eight goals, forty-one assists, ninety-nine points, and and they're not cheapies. He's he's getting them all yeah. right in the slot. We're going to go to another guy that's producing at a very high level. That I think maybe the award's already done, and I'll start it off. 
Roman Yossi is the Norris, Norris Trophy winner. Let me just say this. I'm <laughs> buying everyone. And I don't mean I don't mean me and Anthony. I'm buying the entire uh, – well, there's 15 of you watching right now, by the way. <laughs> thank you very much. But also, I'll go to Nashville. I'll buy the entire city. And, and then while I'm at it, I'm going to go to Colorado and buy that city too because they should know Roman Yossi, who's going to score 100 points this season – without anyone else on his team scoring 100 points. I turn it over you. I mean, it's it's definitely around. Um, you know, I thought he'd reach 100 points, but he's got 87 points. Uh, quick look. I don't know how many games Nashville has left. Uh, I Nashville got it right played, on the screen. They played 73 games, so they got they got nine. They got nine games left. Um yeah, I don't, I don't know if he's going to reach 100, but he's definitely going to be over 90. Um, first defenseman to do that in a long time. Um, and the thing about it is he's not just a guy that puts up points. He's real solid defensively. Um, I mean, I know it's not going to happen, but screw Norris Trophy. I mean, you got to at least for just the sh- – at least just for shits and giggles, you got to – I would even throw him in for the Hart Trophy talk. I mean, he's – I mean, if you take Roman Yossi out, out of Nashville, I mean, how how would they be right now? Because I, I, I could tell you right now, without Roman Yossi, Nashville isn't where they are right now, for sure. But, yeah, he's he's fantastic. He's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I mean, he's I, a defenseman I mean, scoring over 90 points in this day and age? Man. And he's matched up against the other team's best players. Like, yeah. that, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Every, and then – and again, this was back during, and if I recall correctly, in the mid-season award show, you're the one that kind of went off book and said it was Roman Yossi. Yeah. Like I had you down for somebody else, and then corrected it because uh, no, he's, I, he's 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 fantastic. He's 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 great. Yeah, yeah, and he's it's he's historic. been amazing. And, and season. yeah, and also think about this. Who does who's the, the superstar in Nashville? Philip Forsberg, it's, really? That's, yeah. that's 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 what he's got. <laughs> yeah. And Matt, Matt Duchesne has had a resurgent season too. I Which mean, again, good pretty, for Duchesne, good for um, thirty nine goals, and uh, and Ryan Johansson. Yeah, so. even him. He looked like Johansson was falling off a cliff, and even he's he, he's produced at a good le- at a good clip. Yeah. So I mean, good for all those guys. Yeah. Well, here's another question I got, Anthony. I wonder. If- If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.